Hey guys, welcome to MB Tech Talker, my name's Matt. In this video I'm going to show you how to configure a tap interface on the virtual Palo Alto Next Generation Firewall using VMware ESXi and a spam port on a physical Cisco switch in order to passively monitor the traffic traversing my lab network. If you want to see more videos like this, be sure to hit that subscribe button and the bell to get notified every time I post a new video. So what exactly is tap mode? The primary function of the TAP deployment mode is to provide visibility of traffic that is traversing the network without making any obtrusive changes to the network design. A copy of the traffic is sent to the Palo Alto's firewall TAP interface, which allows the firewall to identify application and detect threats. However, in this mode, no enforcement can take place as traffic does not pass through the firewall. So what's a good use case? Let's say your company is using a firewall that only filters traffic at layer 4, using only ports and protocols, and your security team wants more visibility to what traffic is traversing the network. So by simply configuring a span session on the LAN switch, you can send a copy of the traffic from specific ports on the switch to the tap interface on the Palo Alto Next Generation Firewall. Okay, so um, I've drawn this diagram to help explain how I'll be able to create a lab that demonstrates the Palo Alto tap deployment mode. So in this lab, I'm using a physical ESXi server that has multiple physical ethernet ports that connect directly back to a physical uh, 2960 Cisco switch. Uh, there are two um, virtual machines in this lab, a Palo Alto uh, VM series next generation firewall and a Windows 10 uh, client which has access uh, out to the internet via a DSL router. The Palo Alto Ethernet 1 slash 1 interface is connected to an ESXi virtual switch called vSwitch 3. Um, vSwitch 3 is then connected to a physical NIC called VMNIC 2 which is in turn then connected to gig 0 slash 19 on the Cisco switch. It will be the Palo's Ethernet 1 slash 1 interface that will be configured as the tap um, and the management interface uh, will be used to access the web UI uh, from the management PC. Now the client VM um, is connected in a similar way. Um, it's connected to a virtual switch called vSwitch 0 and vSwitch 0 is then connected to a physical NIC called VMNIC 0 uh, which uses an 802.1Q trunk back to the Cisco switch. Uh, now because there are multiple VLANs traversing this trunk um, I will be focusing on VLAN 21 um, so uh, when I configure the span session uh, VLAN 21 will be used as the source VLAN. Okay, so let's move on to the configuration. So we have a task to send a copy of the traffic to the Palo Alto firewall for analysis. Um, so in order to do that, we need to configure a spam port on the Cisco switch to send all VLAN 21 traffic to the physical gigabit zero slash 19 switch port where the Palo's um, TAP interface is connected. So we're going to log on to the firewall now. Um, I've already got the management IP address in the browser. We just need to log in with the default admin admin username and password. It will warn me that I'm using a uh, the default credentials, but obviously this is a lab environment, so I'm not going to worry about that. So once we log in, um, first couple of tasks I do is like to change the time zone and set the NTP server so I get the correct synchronized time. So in order to do that you click on the device tab um, under the setup um, banner you, you click on the management tab and then the gear icon. Um, I'm in Europe, London so we need to choose that one press OK. So next thing is the NTP um, 
server address. So we're going to see the services tab and then click on the gear icon and then the NTP tab. Um, I use the uh, a UK um, UK server or pool of servers. So that's uh, uk.pool.ntp.org. So that's that sorted out. Next thing we need to do is configure a security zone. Um, this uh, obviously this this firewall is is a zone based firewall, and in order to configure any security policies, zones need to be defined, even for a um, tap uh, deployment mode. So click on zones. As you can see, there's no zones defined. Click on the add. Uh, I'm just going to call this simply uh, tap zone and then click OK. Uh, next thing we need to do is assign the tap zone to the interface. So go into interfaces and uh, we know by looking at the, the diagram earlier we're using Ethernet 1 slash um, 1 and as you can see the interface type is already set to tap. Um, here are all the different interface types you can choose from. We'll be going through these in future videos, but for this lab, it is the tap mode. Um, and what we need to do is um, assign the security zone we just created to this interface. So you use the drop down, and I'm going to choose the tap zone and then click OK. So now that has um, set up the basic interface and uh, zone. Um, what we need to do, we need to get traffic, uh, allow traffic to flow into the firewall so we can start analyzing all those applications and protocols, etc. So we need to create a policy. So click on the policy tab. Um, at the moment, there's just two, two policies, which are default policies created, um, which have already been created out of the box. So we need to create a new one, add. Um, I'm just going to call this um, allow all. Um, sourcing from the tap zone, destination um, tap zone. So you just add the tap zone in. Um, just check that the, the tabs have got the right um, configuration. So here any, any application is allowed through the firewall. Service is set to application default, uh, which is what we need in this case actions we need to allow the traffic to come through and we want to make sure that we're sending logs um, to the firewall and then click ok so that's just the, a basic allow or capture everything and that's what we need um, this is just looking at a copy of the traffic that is being sent to the firewall we're not enforcing anything we're not blocking we're just seeing a copy um, so we can get better visibility um, of what traffic it is coming across the network. So once that's all configured, it's simply a case of committing the changes um, by clicking commit and commit all changes. As you can see, policies and also network configurations being changed. So commit that uh, and we'll wait for that to complete. Um, but that's basically all we're going to do on the Paolo for this lab. Um, the next part of the configuration uh, will be on the switch to set up the, the span session and send a copy of that VLAN 21 traffic to the Palo Alto's tab interface. So that's done. We can now log out of that. Okay, so I've already logged on to the Cisco switch. So the next thing we're going to do is configure the spam port. Um, we do that by going into configuration mode um, and then we use uh, this syntax which is uh, monitor session and we're just going to choose a session number. In this case it's going to be one monitor session uh, source and you can and then choose either an interface or you can set up a remote span session or a VLAN. So as we um, discussed earlier, um, we're going to be using the VLAN 21 as the source traffic. So I'm going to put in there uh, VLAN uh, 21 
and if you hit uh, question mark again you've got a few more um, configuration options um, in this instance I just want to uh, monitor both received and transmitted traffic so I'm going to put both at the end of that uh, command hit return uh, and now we need to um, tell the switch where we're going to send the traffic to so we're just going to do the same type of configuration using the same uh, session one but this time it's going to be destination and it's not going to be a VLAN it's going to be an interface um, and um, going back to the diagram or the discussion we know that we're going to be using the physical gigabit 0 slash 19 interface on the switch where the Palo Alto's tap interface is connected so if we uh, put uh, interface uh, gig 0 slash 19 and hit return and that's it that's how simple it is to create a, a spam port um, aka monitor session um, and you can verify that by coming out of the configuration mode and doing a show uh, monitor session one and what you can see is um, we are source VLAN the source VLAN is 21 and the destination port is gig 0 slash 19 um, and, and that's it that's as simple as get and then really if you are going to keep the configuration don't forget to write it back to the running configuration so that's it for the switch configuration we can go back to the Palo Alto and to uh, verify um, if traffic is is hitting the policy that we created so we're going to do that now okay so i've logged back into the paolo um, i need to verify that the traffic is actually arriving at the paolo's tap interface by looking at the hit count within the security wall i created earlier so if we go to the policies tab and under the security heading we go to the to the rule um, the allow rule you can see that the span configuration has been successful traffic is arriving at, at the tap interface as there is a value underneath the hit count and you can refresh the page and actually see the hit count increment I need to point out that in order to see um, the full traffic logs underneath the monitor tab the Palo Alto file must be licensed However, if you just want to practice setting up a tap interface and verify it's working, looking and seeing the, um, the, the traffic is hitting the security wall would be enough. For those of you who want to do the complete configuration and see the traffic logs, you need to contact your Palo Alto reseller or Palo account team to obtain a valuation license or lab license. So for, this, for, for purposes of this video, I'm going to do the complete configuration by applying a VM authorization code to license the firewall. Um, once the license ha has been applied, the firewall will need to reboot um, and it will take a, a while before I'll be able to access the web UI again. So let's get on and do that. I'm going to go to uh, device and then licenses. And as you can see, uh, there's no licenses um, applied at all. Um, I'm going to ret retrieve the license key from the from the license server um, and it's going to take a, a little while for it to um, contact the server and um, oh there you go it was worked quite quickly if you go to the dashboard um, should be able to uh, see that the VM appliance license is installed and it's going to be restarting the pan services which which will mean it will reboot so I'm going to stop the video there wait for the firewall to reboot and then we'll reconvene when I have web UI access. Okay so the Palo's back up and I've been able to access the web UI. So first of all let's verify the license has been installed correctly. So let's go to the device tab and then on the left hand side go all the way down to licenses. Here you can see the licenses have been applied. So now we should be able to go to the monitor tab and see the traffic that is coming into the tap interface from VLAN 21 from the spam port configured. So let's click on the monitor tab and there you go we are now seeing all the logs come in. Um, what we're going to do now is filter on the client IP that's in the lab. 
So I'm just going to click on this hyperlink and that's going to build a filter to show me only traffic from the client, which is 21.53. If I hit return on that, all logs have been filtered and it's showing me all the traffic being generated by that client and being and the copies being sent to the tap interface. And as you can see, um, the Palo Alto is now identifying um, applications using um, Palo Alto's next generation app ID feature. So this gives you a much better insight into the traffic traversing your network. Um, this, this now completes the lab. It's been a successful uh, demonstration. Uh, I hope you've enjoyed it. Okay guys, that's it for today's video. Thanks for watching. Over the next coming weeks, I will be uploading more videos where I will be sharing more content about Palo Alto firewall features and technologies and how to configure them. If you like this video, I'm sure you know what to do by now, but just in case you don't, please hit that like button below and share with your friends and be sure to hit that subscribe button and the bell to get notified every single time I post a new video. If you have any ideas of video content you want me to create, please put them in the comments below as I would love to hear your feedback on any aspect of my channel. Please keep watching and I will see you in the next video. Thanks.